Hello. Hello, Plant Bay. <laughs> Hello, Plant Bay. It's that time of the day that I it look is. for the right <laughs> filter. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So you say, you find it, and then we'll get started. Hey, everyone. All right, let's get started. Welcome to Planted with Kay and Sai. I'm Kay of Enrooted Love. And I'm Sai of Cyril Cybernated. And this week for episode three, we're talking about... Earth to <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Sorry, my stick isn't cooperating. So yes, this week we're going to talk about fertilizers. A few of you sent in questions or asked questions um, during our last episode actually about fertilizing. That's why we thought it's a, a good transition from our previous episode, which are Hoyas. So yeah, um, let me start with... Um, so what do you what does your fertilizer routine look like, Sai? Well, basically I use liquid fertilizer, one that I um dilute with my watering agent, which is water. And I <laughs> use um I've uh, talked about this with someone else last time that a way for me not to forget to fertilize my plants is I put them in essential oil containers or bottles and I put them in the sink. Um, in smaller quantity so that whenever I see them, I just drop a few drops um, in my watering can. And that's a way for me not to, you know, forget fertil to fertilize my plants. How does your um, fertilizing schedule? Um, um, so I is? follow this mentality of fertilizing weekly, weekly. And I touched mm -hmm. base a little bit on this last week. Um, what, and what that means is so that first weekly means not strong. So at a very low dilution mm -hmm. um, and then weekly as in the week. Um, and I do, I don't necessarily mm -hmm. fertilize every week, but I do fertilize regularly throughout the year. Um, and the main reason for that for me is because I grow 99% of my collection in passive hydro. And when there mm -hmm. is an absence of organic media, there is also an absence of nutrients. There's nothing that is breaking down like there would be in soil. So there is an absence of nitrogen. Um, and to ensure mm -hmm. that my plants are getting what they need to grow, to bloom, um, to look gorgeous, uh, I mm -hmm. just make sure that I am providing them with those nutrients. Um, and my favorite product to use, I am not sponsored, but you can check my Amazon uh, store mm -hmm. for this. <laughs> um, I love to use Fox Farms. Um, I think it's really great. The Big Bloom Concentrate is just really good for like an overall just like maintenance mm -hmm. uh, maintenance fertilizer. Um, and this is what I, I rely on all year round. Um, and then when I see that, so this is what I use just for maintenance. When mm -hmm. I see my plants are beginning to push more vegetative growth, especially at the beginning of spring, then what I'll do is I will use Big Bloom mm. um, with Grow Big. So the combination of this two yeah. helps better support uh, that vegetative growth. Now, I have a lot of Hoyas, um, mm -hmm. and I have a few orchids still. And, you know, the, the end goal for growing these, uh, these plants is to get them to bloom. So when I start seeing peduncles forming or buds mm -hmm. forming, then I introduce a bloom fert, which is tiger bloom. Now, Tiger Bloom differs from the other ones where it has a higher phosphorus mm -hmm. um, number. Um, and we'll get into what that means and what these three numbers are here in a minute. Um, but, you know, one of the questions that we had gotten was, how do you know when to switch or adjust your fertilizers? Mm -hmm. um, so Fox Farms on their website has a schedule that you can follow. Um, and it essentially is a schedule for seedlings, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it breaks it up by week. Um, so what I have done is I've taken their schedule and very loosely follow that. Mm -hmm. It kind of just acts as my guideline. 
Um, so I see that on their schedule when they're trying to push more vegetative growth. I see which formulas they're using and at what ratios they're doing it at. And then when that, uh, when the schedule moves on to reproductive growth, which mm -hmm. is where we see blooms and fruits, um, you know, they adjust their formula as well. Uh, so like I said, I follow it very loosely. Mm -hmm. um, I don't follow it to a T. I more so just try to follow it more intuitively. So I look at my plants and I see what's going on with them um, and just kind of go from there. You know, if I see a lot of baby leaves, that means it's in vegetative growth. So mm -hmm. I'm going to want to push something that is, you know, balanced across the board and perhaps a little bit higher in nitrogen. Now, when it's in um, reproductive growth or we're seeing a lot of blooms and fruit, then, um, you know, we increase the amount of phosphorus um, to better support those blooms so that mm -hmm. we actually see them to maturity. Um, so, yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about what NPK is? For yeah, um, I actually people? took notes. So um, apparently just for everyone's um, sake, I guess, um, fertilizers are our way of supplying nutrients to our plants. So not all our plants are in organic mediums like soil, whereas it will come naturally. Everybody grows differently. Like we have hydroponics and that's where your liquid fertilizers come in. They also come in granules. Um, they can come in powder form in like, what do you call those house plant sticks? The fertilizer oh, stick yeah, as well, yeah, the remember? Mm -hmm. uh, and they also come in fish emulsions, either synthetic or organic, which I'm not mm -hmm. trying again. Um, so um, there are also, since you touched base on them, there are also balanced fertilizers um, mm -hmm. and the specific ones or the complete fertilizers. Um, the ones that um, you said were to address blooms or during vegetative growth and etc so nitrogen it promotes your leaf and stem growth so if you uh your that's your fertilizer the three numerical values touch. the first one is your nitrogen so for that um, fertilizer it's a two so it helps with your leaf and stem growth the next one would be phosphorus which will help your plant to grow and flower as well making their stem stronger so in that example the phosphorus value is eight if i remember my research right um, it is per 100 gallons of dilution that, so that's what the numerical ratio is and lastly the potassium which aids aids in your root growth and to a certain ex extent it balances the wheel between your nitrogen and your phosphorus so your um balanced fertilizer would be the usual 20 20 10 20. 10, 10 30, oh no 30, 30. 30. yes yeah. if the numerical values are equal or at least close to each other that's considered your balanced fertilizer and your um more specific or focused fertilizers will be like the ones in your example if the and nitrogen ratio is lower you want to promote bloom etc it will be adjusted um and then one thing that I like to supplement with my watering is CalMag. So that's calcium mm. and magnesium right here. And that just helps with um, just better overall health for your plant. I actually mm -hmm. bought this because um, when I was growing, uh, what are they? You know, the lady, oh my God, lady slippers, um, the lady slipper orchids. What are they called? Oh. I'm going, my mind's going numb right now, but lady slipper orchids require a higher, um, like they require more calcium mm -hmm. just for better growth development. Um, and none of my stuff here had enough calcium mm. to uh, support it. So I bought CalMag and I just, I add this just to all of my fertilizer whenever I do go and fertilize um, just cause I have it, why not, right? What's it? Yeah. It's not hurt it. Um, and then I also like to use Super Thrive. Mm -hmm. So this is not a fertilizer, you guys. Um, it is consider it like um, uh, like vitamins yeah. for your plant. Um, and it just gives it that little oomph, 
you know, That's just a true. little something, something um, to make it all happy. I particularly use it for new acquisitions as well as new mm -hmm. conversions because it does help a little bit with um, kind of bringing the stress level down for the plant and helping it recover. Uh, and you guys know when I convert plants, I, it goes through a lot of stress. So. <laughs> if I could give it a glass of wine, I would to relax it, but it gets super thrive instead. So um, there's that. Um, and then, so although I do use these, um, I grow a lot of plants. Um, these guys up here in Pawn. Mm -hmm. And Pawn is rated with, um, it's got slow, slow release. release fertilizer uh, mixed into the mixture. And that is rated for six months um, mm -hmm. yes, with, six continue, months. with continuous uh, passive hydroponic um, like growing habits. Um, but even though there is fertilizer in there, um, I still supplement with whatever I'm using. Um, so I will mix, you know, I mix all of my fertilizer in just like a gallon jug. Mm -hmm. um, and if my pond plants are ready for a refill and I've got some fertilizer on hand, I'll just go ahead and give it to it. Yeah. Um, and I'm comfortable doing that because I fertilize my plants or I feed them at such a low dilution that I'm not concerned that I will burn the roots. Um, and actually, that's one thing that I wanted to touch base on is that if you are growing in passive hydro, um, the safest way to go about fertilizing is to maintain your ratios within a quarter to mm. half strength and never the full strength that's shown on the bottle. So every fertilizer will have a recommended dosage mm -hmm. um, on the back. You just have to find it and read it. Um, but what I do, especially just for like maintenance throughout the year is that, and especially during the winter, I will never go above a quarter strength. Now, when I see that a plant is just like really taking off on growth, then I'll start bumping up, bumping it up a little, but it never goes beyond half strength. Um, and that's because I'm just worried that, you know, because the roots are always exposed, that yeah. I'll burn the roots. Um, with that said, however, hydroponic fertilizers in general are a lot, uh, I don't want to say they're not as strong, but they're they won't burn as much as like say soil fertilizers were. So like if you're, you know, if we're talking about um, like miracle Grow, mm -hmm. like the, the blue powder, you could definitely burn your plants yeah. if you don't, uh, if you don't follow the, uh, the instructions on that. So. And the formulation yeah. makes a lot of difference, you know, like yeah. if it's liquid, it's meant to be diluted. If it's granules, then you're expected to like run water through it to mm -hmm. you know let it see through the roots and everything so um it is also an important consideration now Absolutely. i guess let's probably yeah you've practically answered two of our um the dm'd in questions um so mama mia was asking about fertilizing pun um, after hi olive hi roscoe blanco um, after six months. So you and I practice the same. We water weekly, weekly. I mean, fertilize weekly, weekly anyway. So even if it's not, it hasn't been six months, actually, if it, even if it hasn't been like two weeks or what, if I still have leftover diluted fertilizer or watering um, agent, I would give it to my plant practically. Yeah. So it's good. And um, there was a really nice question about um, a comparison about water soluble fertilizer and slow release for you which one is better if there's one that's better than the other um personally because i don't grow in organic media um mm. slow release doesn't really work for the media that i uh, that i grow in um mm -hmm. i say that although pond does have slow release um yeah. but I just, I like to have control. <laughs> I have control issues. Yeah. Um, so for me, my vote would be water soluble just because I know exactly how much the plant is getting at that, you know, certain time. Um, but I do use slow release fertilizers outdoors. So all of my mm. plants, like all of the garden beds, I sprinkle slow release for it out there as well as any potted arrangements that we have outdoors. Um, mm. But for passive hydro, I just would not recommend it 
um, with the exception of what's already included in pod. In pod, yeah. yeah. What is what's your thoughts on that? Well, I personally don't use sl slow release unless they're already incorporated in the existing substrate right. that I bring home. Um, because like you, I have control issues. And, you know, I don't trust. If, what if my slow, slow release application was a fail and that means, you know, I haven't really fertilized the plant. So it gives me a bit of comfort knowing that I know exactly when I'm putting in fertilizer and how much strength there is. Um, it wouldn't rely on how good I mix the substrate or how good I sprinkle the slow release. You know, it just mm -hmm. it's just a matter of control for me as well. That actually brings me um, to a point that we didn't even touch on and it wasn't asked, mm -hmm. but um, one thing that's really important, regardless if you're growing with organic media or if you're mm -hmm. growing inorganic passive hydro is that you're doing regular flushes mm -hmm. of your plants and its media. Um, and it's the same for both soil and for, um, for LECA and pond, mm -hmm. but when there is a presence of fertilizer, there will be an increased presence of salt buildups. Mm -hmm. um, and with LECA, you see that all a little more often just because you get those white crystals at the top. Yeah. Um, and it's not as noticeable in soil, but it is present. Um, and it's very important that when you are watering that you do a thorough flush regardless mm -hmm. of your media so that you're washing out all of that excess, um, excess salt buildup um because that'll be like a quick way to kill your plant if there's mm. so much salt build up there it'll just start eating away at your roots and um that's just a bad day so i just wanted to like add that real quick <laughs> yes but, wash it yeah the shower <laughs> emoji and the water emoji yes <laughs> <laughs> um there is oh this is a good question can you give a plant the wrong fertilizer by greg's greenery um no, well, okay, you can give a plant too much fertilizer. Let's say mm. that. Um, not necessarily the wrong fertilizer, right? So say there's there's like there's orchid fertilizer or there's things that are marketed as orchid fertilizer, cactus fertilizer, and then just houseplant fertilizer. Mm -hmm. If you're erring on the side of caution and you're using it in a weak dilution, mm -hmm. you're not gonna hurt your plant. You're just giving mm -hmm. it nutrients, whatever. Because at the end of the day, your nutrients are always going to be NPK um, with micronutrients mixed in there if it's bougie. Um, but can you give your plant too much fertilizer? Mm -hmm. Yes. But the wrong type? No. The only reason that there are certain fertilizers targeted for certain plants is that plant, different plants have different needs. Mm -hmm. Right? So I know with cacti you don't want to give it too much nitrogen i think if i remember that correctly so the ratio for that will have a lower nitrogen level compared to the phosphorus and the potassium and that's for cactus um but if you gave it a 30 30 30 it'll be fine like not I, a big deal technically it should be fine it may not have the expected results if you gave right. the wrong concentration mm -hmm. or the wrong ratio but i think technically it should still be okay yeah um, okay um, a little bit of fertilizer is better than no fertilizer mm -hmm. true what's next okay now let's go touch base into the very genus specific questions i'm sorry okay Let's okay, see. I would answer the question about Wuperzia because um, yeah, Meow Squad yeah. asked about, can you fertilize Wuperzia plants? If so, with what? I heard they're super sensitive. So I read upon this because, yes, I most, sometimes accidentally water my Wuperzias. I know that their roots are sensitive because it's very shallow, thin, and epiphytic plants in general can be very reactive to a very um, strong fertilizer regimen. Um, based on what I read, it should be slow release fertilizers, which I personally don't use. Um, it's it's supposed to be like safer for Huperzias. But it happened in the past, whereas I accidentally fertilized my plant because they're always on the weaker um, concentration anyways, it didn't do them harm. However, I've read stories from my friends who accidentally fertilized it with a regular strength and it did burn the new emerging leaves. So that's what um, 
and how about the question about pings? Do you ever fertilize your pings? I have not. More. Um, and that's because I'm too chicken to do it. <laughs> um, only because I rotted a ping. Like I, I, mm. it was, it was my bad. Um, it was crown rot. And so because of that, I'm a little overly cautious on getting the foliage wet now mm -hmm. and allowing it to like get in there um and yes db terrariums has been pushing me to do this just to spray it um <laughs> so i will do it uh mm -hmm. but i haven't gotten around to it yet actually um one of our ping friends sent me um sent me like a little condiment cup of mm. the stuff that he uses and he said to give that a try um so I when i've gained the confidence to do it I will, <laughs> um, but so far, no. Um, and that's because I actually have fungus gnats, you guys. Um, ever since I started using moss poles, um, the fungus gnats have started to pop up, mm -hmm. but I have all my pings right next to everything that has a moss pole, so they don't go far. Um, and my pings are fed pretty regularly. Um, <laughs> so do I, I I've to? had I've had <laughs> gnats because of the moss that I kept on top of my Hooperseas too. Yeah. Um, so, so I guess just put a I ping get, next to it. Yeah, I should get some more pings. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, just shout out to Anne Lee Tran for asking that. I just wanted yeah. to um, shout out your username. Um, from Bible and Budgets, um, what type do you use? Leka and Pawn, and how often and what concentration? Yeah, so um, we touched a little bit well, on yeah, that. Yeah, she touched, you touched base, quarter, or up to half, no, not, nothing more than half the strength. Yeah. Um, I use Fox Farm just because I had purchased it for our Calamansi trees and I wanted something mm. that was OMRI certified for organic growing. Um, yeah. But if you're not going to consume your plants, then I say like the general hydroponics is a very mm. budget friendly way to go. Um, Fox Farms, I don't find to be very expensive to begin with. Um, and I personally like them. So I've been using that regularly. Uh, my only thing is if you are growing in passive hydroponics like I am, I would highly mm -hmm. suggest using a hydroponic uh, fertilizing Fert system mm -hmm. because the entire setup is taken into account when it's formulated. Whereas, you know, when you're using just like Jacks or miracle Grow, mm -hmm. like that is formulated for organic media use. Um, yeah. So just take that into consider. However, if, all you have on hand is miracle Grow. Just err on the side of caution mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. use it at a quarter strength. You could even mix it at a quarter strength and then dilute it even more when yeah. you pour it into your, um, what do you call that? Into your watering can and you'll mm -hmm. be fine. Like yeah. it's fine. Just make sure you're flushing it so that uh, your salt crystals wash away. So it, it really isn't as intense as I make it sound. Um, I just have this stuff already. That's why I use it, you guys. <laughs> Same. I just usually consume whatever I, I still have. Um, and I think it's time to wrap up. But I wanted, as a woman, I wanted to ask you this very controversial question because I, I think it's been going around that um, people have been fertilizing with their menses. So do you recommend that or what's your take on that? Me first. Personally, I don't find it hygienic like, like what Mark Hart's plants, Guia Mark said. Um, I think fertilizer can come very cheap or very uh, I mean uh, prepared in a very efficient way so I don't yes Patricia sorry I just heard that big what <laughs> um, so I just personally think that there are other more naturalistic organic way of fertilizing your plants now okay what what is your take on that um, so the first I, I it's just beyond me mm -hmm. um, the first time I heard about it I was shocked because um, I've heard of other like home concoctions, right? So like mm. rice water, <laughs> crushed eggshells, um, fish poop, <laughs> fish, yeah, aquarium water, um, even chicken poop, right? Folks mm -hmm. that have yeah, chickens. Um, but as a lady, I would not feel comfortable <laughs> collecting that and then um spreading it amongst my plants that's just me personally i mean no judgment on anybody who mm. you know would want to do that um you do you boo boo mm -hmm. but it's just not for me um 
like you said, fertilizer comes <laughs> very conveniently packaged <laughs> in bottles and um, it's not expensive. It does not have to be, <laughs> um, it does not have to be as expensive as some people make it. But I just, I, that, that's a hard pass for me. Um, and what if you're irregular, so you want fertilizer <laughs> into the next dip cycle? <laughs> yeah, so, so someone here is, you know, like some people swear by horse manure. And I think if you're growing crops outside, um, organic fertilizers like that are, it's probably okay. Like if yeah. you don't, you know, if you don't mind the smell because it's outdoors, but we're talking about indoor plants in your home in intimate mm -hmm. places in your home. Like for us, you know, I have, this is my space here. Like nobody really comes in here except for me, but we do have plants in our family area, like you, your kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in the kitchen, like, I can't just, imagine. <laughs> Yeah. So it's just, you know, it's not for me. Um, if people find that it is effective for them and they're comfortable mm -hmm. going that route, then don't allow my opinion to, to, to deter you from that. Um, but I think I will continue to use Fox Farms <laughs> to feed my plants. I'll stick um, with my refilled um, liquid yeah. hydroponic fertilizers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what a way to close this out. Mm -hmm. My goodness, I feel like my blushes are coming through. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, this, was a fun, <laughs> this was a fun topic. Uh, watch out. We are, okay, we are going through growing pains right now and getting our mm -hmm. schedule like really fixed. Last week was, was weird for me because I was on travel. Um, and if you caught that or caught the replay, um, I was off. <laughs> <laughs> but we are working through getting our mm -hmm. schedule a little more regular. So um, we will strive to get the announcement out on Sunday, like we had originally planned, mm -hmm. um, and get your input in then. Um, and we can, you guys can expect us to be back here next Thursday at the same time. Yeah. Um, so, Sai, thank you so much. It's always thank fun. Thank you, Kay. It was so and, fun. Thank you guys for joining yes. us. And for team replay later on, give yes, the video a thumbs up. Yes, team replay. And comment. <laughs> Bye. Bye.